Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we're going to be talking about what has gone wrong with the 2023 Jacksonville Jaguars throughout the first three games of the year. Um, definitely not something we want to talk about um, or something we really expected, but here we are. Jaguars are 1-2 and two after uh, two straight losses in really bad fashion. And so a lot of people are... You know, hitting the panic button, uh, kind of rightfully so in some ways, because this team, quite frankly, reminds us a lot of 2018, whether or not it is the same team. And so, you know, we want to sit here and, and kind of break this down where they're at, maybe what the issues are, and what is really realistic to expect at this point, if, if we really have any idea of what's going to happen. Um, you know, because this team is at a crossroads. You know, to spoil a little bit of what I'm going to talk about. But before I get into all that, I do want to just kind of generally update you guys on what we're going to be focusing on on this channel. Because it's something I've given a lot of thought to just the last month or so since the season started. Because we didn't run this last year during the season. We, we did uh, the podcast, and then we started uploading videos after the season ended. So... It's different this year because obviously the, the channel's around during the season. So I just want to give you guys an idea of what we're going to be putting out, um, what we're going to be focusing on, what we aren't going to be focusing on too much, and make sure you guys are aware of all that. So if you want to skip past that, more than welcome to. I'll try to leave in like a timestamp so you can see when I finish talking about this. But it shouldn't be that long. But simply put, um, for you guys who have been here for a while, uh, as in since like January, February that area like right for free agency a lot of our content has been focused on the information side of things in regards to like contracts uh team construction salary cap uh the free agency the draft a lot of like roster construction topics because for me that's what i'm a lot better talking about i feel like that's where i offer the most analysis and ultimately what i want to do with this channel is is two things one we want to have, um, not to sound kind of cringy here, but we want to have a community where, you know, we're not trashing people because they have a different opinion than us. We want to have a community where really anyone can be here, anyone can enjoy it, and uh, we're just providing you guys information and some opinions as well to help you inform yourselves on just what's going on. Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions with with just the, the team building side of things. Like, people think... You can go um, pay a guy $50 million for a position and it's fine or do whatever you want or trade all your, your draft picks and your team's good. And it's just not the way that the NFL operates, you know, and those are just general examples. Um, but we want to just provide analysis on that. So that's the the most important part of this is, is the combination of those two things. And what I struggle with as a uh, – a, content creator i can't find our word that sounds better than that but it's cringy but we'll go with it um it is a lot of like the the game recap stuff like doing that on a weekly basis game previews i'm not as good with that because a lot of the stuff i provide is honestly stuff that a lot of the fans already know maybe it'll change at some point where we will preview games like i'm sure if there's playoff games we'll talk about those you know big things like that but um, I just really don't offer as much with a lot of the normal content that other creators do. And so the, what I want to offer is something different. We want to add to what the community has. There's a lot of people who are great to watch already if you're just looking for that daily content on the Jaguars and what's going on at the moment all the time. You know, Generation Jaguar is one of them. If you want more of a, a fan perspective, you know, you're going to go to someone like UCF Jaguar or Jaguars United. There's a lot of really good channels out there, uh, a Brett James channel as well. And so we want to add something extra on to that that I feel like hasn't been here as much, and so that's the whole purpose of what this channel is. And if you guys have ideas on what you want to see, absolutely let me know. I'll listen to it, and hopefully we can add in some of that. But I just want you all to know kind of what to expect because we really haven't had a whole lot coming out recently because a lot of those topics have been kind of dead at this point and they'll pick up um because you know we'll have like trade deadline coming up soon we're gonna know more about this roster what are the needs how do you 
get through this season, you know, not being able to address everything that the team uh, needs to fix. So we'll talk about that all. We'll have more more uh, topics going, but just want to give you all an idea on that. And honestly, when the Jaguars lose games really bad, like they have the last two weeks, I am not in a great mood to talk about it right after. Like a lot of people are able to, not that they're in good moods either, but just not as good for me. I'm more of a Debbie Downer kind of person, so I need like a day to calm down, such as right now. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, with all that said, we're going to actually jump into this talking about this year's team. So obviously, a lot of high expectations for the Jaguars in 2023. They were expected to be a front runner for the AFC kind of a, a bit of a dark horse candidate because there's still a lot of people who doubted them before the year because they're the Jaguars. But you look at the roster and you see a team that should be able to compete for a Super Bowl. Not a whole lot of questions. You know, their, their receiving core should be great. Great quarterback, great running back. Offensive line's a little iffy in the center, um, as in the interior of it. The defense, you know, even if it's not been super productive, a lot of young players that could step up, get better, right? And we have seen some of that, especially week two against Kansas City. I think the defense came to play in that game. But there's a lot of reason why people were optimistic going into this year. And some people still are at this point, And that's completely fine because this may just blow over and, and be done with in a week or two. Hopefully it is. But we just don't know at this point what's going to happen. But this was a team with high expectations. Very similar to what happened in 2018. Because people saw the Jaguars field one of the best defenses in NFL history. A lot of those players came back and they thought, well, hey, this team might go all the way again, you know, except past the championship game. And so there are people who even project them as the best team in the NFL at that point. And then there were also some, of course, who doubted them because of Blake Bortles and the contract extension. Obviously, that and the mentality of the team ended up being the the death penalty to it and we've had a lot of bad football since then because of all that and so we looked at this team and we didn't really see any similarities right because we think well Lawrence for one obviously is a franchise quarterback there's still no doubt about that at this point um I don't think there ever will be again and then you've got the other side of it where this team seemed like it grew out of that mentality last year after the Lions game, like they matured a lot. They were taking every game seriously and they weren't buying into the national media hype. Well, now we get to this year. And so we expect it to stay that way. And not really saying it changed with Lawrence, right? Like, like I said, still the answer. We're not questioning that at all. But something went wrong with the mentality this offseason. I don't know why. I don't know what players it is. I imagine it's the majority of the players based off the way Peterson talks. I think there's certain ones probably not involved. You know, for example, I think like Trevor Lawrence, highly doubt it. He was preaching to ignore the national media pretty much all off season. Uh, Travis Etienne seems to have his head on straight. I'm sure there's others you could throw on there too, right? But this team, a lot of the players, according to Doug Peterson, bought into the hype. And as he said, that is one of the worst things that you can do as a football team. I think you go into games with that kind of mentality and you just expect to win. You know, like regardless of how many bad things happen, you just feel like you're entitled to have a chance. Maybe they don't feel that way, but obviously we're speculating a little bit and we do have some facts and, and things we've heard from the coach. And as long as you trust them, they're probably legitimate. And so you get into a game like with Kansas City where they had so many opportunities early on to go just run away with that game, quite frankly. They should have. Both game, both uh, teams in that game should have just ran away with it after the start happened because they were both just playing poorly. It was great defense, but the offenses were absolutely terrible. And Jacksonville just seemed like it thought, well, we'll probably stay in this no matter what we'll do, and we'll have a shot at the end. And sure enough, they don't. And uh, they end up losing the game. They don't get the stop on defense late. They don't get their uh, fourth and 12 attempt. And here you are at one and one, and you lost the biggest game of the year. And there's a big concern there, too, 
because of the seeding, which unfortunately, probably not going to be talking a whole lot more about seeding this year unless this team turns it around pretty quick because you can kiss number one goodbye um, unless, like I said, they turn it around really quick. But they had an opportunity against Kansas City to play that game really well, to go win it, to be up two games and to have the tiebreaker. And instead, they laid an egg and they didn't show up. And we thought, okay, they're going to be pissed off. They're going to come into this next week and play good. They play the Texans. The Texans have all these injuries. And, and I think, you know, although C.J. Stroud is playing amazing so far this year, the Jaguars have a better roster. There's no doubt about that. You know, even if the Texans went and won the division this year, which, I mean, we'll see how this all ends. But if they did, Jacksonville still has the deepest roster in this entire division. It's it's loaded all over. But it's clearly been an issue of execution during games. You saw it over and over on Sunday where it would seem like they were getting back into the game, but someone would make a fatal mistake. Almost every single drive, like Jamal Agnew fumbling, letting a fullback return a punt return touchdown or kick return touchdown, whichever it was, all the way down the field. Trevor Lawrence throwing a pick. Calvin Ridley dropping a touchdown. And it's just all these things adding up because they can't get out of their own way. And it's almost like they think they're just always going to have an air chance like they did last year much of the time until they played Kansas City which is the one team you're never going to get that chance against it's just not going to happen you know you got to treat them different and so here we are you know and Jacksonville's lost two games in a row at least the Chiefs game was somewhat respectable and you could justify some things maybe just bad luck on the offense and they had a great defense great special teams too but this last week you lose 37-17 to the Texans it's very clear there's a problem. And you could tell when you're watching Doug Peterson in his interview, seemingly almost on the verge of either like screaming or crying or something. Obviously, he held it together. We're not saying he did cry or any of that, but clearly extremely frustrated. I mean, he gave this message to the team at halftime. He's talked to them about this before. This has been very clear. Some of the players have talked to the team about this. And they just couldn't get out of their own way. And this is going to be a moment for the team where they're going to have to mature again. We thought they were mature. We thought they were over this. Until they prove that they are, they are not. You know, and this could unfortunately be a year where that lack of maturity as a newly competitive organization, hopefully it stays that way, cost this team a chance in a season where we felt like they should go all the way or they should at least make like the conference championship this team should be competing with anyone in the league there's no doubt there's no excuses they need to be good against every team whether they win or lose and have a really good record by the end of the year anything else is a disappointment and here we are one and two now are there issues on the team as far as uh, as talent. There's a couple. Look, I mean, I, I think the majority of this issue is a mentality issue. But obviously there's things you can improve. That's why people go after Balky, for example. Because, okay, why didn't you draft a corner? Why didn't you go trade up for Cam Smith? Why didn't you give up more to go do that? Why, why didn't you sign someone in free agency? Why didn't you just get like a Casey Hayward? Do something, you know? I mean, there, there were opportunities to do this, and they settled with Trey Herndon. Now, I don't think it's worked out terribly. I think Trey Herndon has overperformed this year. Now, is he a great starter? No, we're not saying that. But he's getting paid like $2.5 million, and he's doing really good for what he's getting paid. But people are going to have questions about that, especially when the secondary struggles, or when you have a guy like Darius Williams, who we felt really comfortable with, have a massive mistake during the game that pretty much sealed it for the Texans. And so it's very easy to go after someone like Balky, who has, you know, been been the face of uh, failure, according to the fans, in this franchise for a while. You know, and that changed last year. But people hate him. 
you know, and they still hate him today. And there are faults that he has here. You know, he can do better. But as much as you can try to blame things on that or say, oh, it's the offensive play calling, there's just too many execution failures on the field. It's hard to justify that all being on coaching, especially when so much of the offense is just drops or players missing blocks. You know, that's not a coaching issue as far as the play calling. It's not a press Taylor thing. You can say the team's not prepared, but then you have to ask, well, why were they prepared last year? Why are they less prepared their second year? And I think it all points to probably a mentality issue. Now, what can they do about this year? I mean, for one, you fix the mentality and, and you take every game seriously and you think of yourself as a team that's completely unproven because then you got something to fight for, right? And that's, that's the clear top thing they need to focus on. In addition... There are things that this team can do to improve this year, but I think it depends on where they sit going into, like, say, the trade deadline. Because if the Jaguars go into the trade deadline, say they lost to the Saints, and they're like 2-5, and five, you're not making moves for players. I mean, if they do, okay, but you're going to need to be really good at the end of the year. You're going to have to have a comeback like you did last year. And you're going to have to do that against some teams that are ready for you as well, not... Not like last year where they just didn't really think of you as anything more in the 5-8 and eight team or 4-8, and eight, whatever week it was of the season. So it's uh, it's unfortunate that's going to be that way, you know, at the end of the season and just throughout the teams are going to be ready, but that's just the, the task at hand for this organization right now. And so if they're in a bad situation like that, I wouldn't go make a trade, you know, unless it's a player that you think, hey, this is going to be someone we're going to have around for a really long time. You know, for example, last year, they were, I think, 2-5 and five as well at the trade deadline, or 2-6, and six, um, depends on whether it was before or after the game that week against Denver, but they went and traded for Calvin Ridley, because they saw Ridley as a long-term acquisition, you know, and so there's justification for something like that, but I think if this team can at least get into that trade deadline period, at least 3-4, and four, and they're probably going to be better. I think realistically, they're probably four and three at that point heading into week eight. I think they'll get some of this turned around, but they're still going to, you know, lose a game here. I'm sure. Um, then you're good to go make a move. You know, you hope someone like maybe Daniil Hunter hits the trade market. I mean, I know he was on it earlier and he got pulled off because they extend or they didn't extend him. They reworked his contract. But, I mean, with that said, there's teams like the Vikings that are really struggling early on that they're, they're winless or they're really bad, they're below expectations, and this is a prime opportunity for a lot of those teams to just reset to an extent, go get the first pick and get a guy like Caleb Williams, or if you like Drake May more, you know, uh, depending on where you sit, but you're probably going after Williams realistically. That's going to be where um, where these teams probably want to sit at that point if they're struggling, and so they'd be willing to move pieces. So you hope something becomes available. But for Jacksonville, I think the only piece that you could really even consider at the trade deadline that's reliable is getting an edge rusher. You know, and even you could also just look at free agency still because there's still free agents out there right now. You know, Carlos Dunlap and Melvin Ingram – are examples of that. Just guys you can add in. But I think this team, probably regardless of what happens the rest of this year, they're probably going to retain everyone on the defensive line. The only guy who might go is like Foley Fadakasi, but Josh Allen's going to return. I mean, I don't have much doubt in that. So you're going to have him back, and I think it's very clear right now that the Jaguars do need that other pass rusher who plays at a high level. And someone like Daniil Hunter is perfect for that. Maybe it's another player who gets available. We just don't know what it's going to look like at that point. But they need to add on one more guy. And they'd have a great room if they go do that. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see where they sit. As far as the offensive line, which I think is the other big issue on the team, as far as just the talent on the roster, I don't know what you can really do at this point in the season. I mean, even a guy like Dalton Risner is signed. You know, you don't even have that option anymore. Uh, technically, 
if you want a center, I think Ben Jones is out there, but I don't think it's much better than what you have. And I don't, I don't really trust what they have in the interior, but a lot of the time when you're building that part of the offensive line, it's better to draft rather than to obtain someone else. I mean, we've seen it consistently for Jacksonville where they'll sign an offensive lineman and it just doesn't work out as expected. Like Brandon Scherf's all right. He gets paid $17 million a year though. He's not earning $17 million a year at this point. Um, Andrew Norwell was a prime example of that massively underperformed his contract after getting signed from the Panthers. So you have these examples. I think that's going to be something they have to wait on. And those are the two big issues, the interior of the offensive line and the pass rush on the defense. You know, other stuff is kind of like long-term building. Like, I don't think you're going to get a receiver in that's going to make your offense just explode at this point. You know, if you're super concerned about drops, I, I don't think – you're really getting a long-term cornerback either. I think you just need to draft someone next year if you can get your hands on a good prospect. So that's kind of what I expect. I I do think at this point, even if the Jaguars are really bad going up to the trade deadline, I still think they're going to make a move. And I think unless like maybe they win out, that's probably what you can expect. They've shown that they're willing to do that. And especially with the team struggling right now and kind of needing some kind of spark, I think you could see them try to add on to that. And hopefully there's something there by that point. But it's pretty likely that the Jaguars are going to be buyers at this point. And maybe, maybe they'll be sellers too, because you got to question a tackle too with Cam Robinson. And maybe the solution, like people have talked about, Walker Little moves inside, that fixes some of your offensive line issue. Because really the only thing you can do with the interior right now is shuffle who you got. Maybe they do that, but question is too, Cam Robinson, effectively, um, he's a change of $14 million on the cap this year. And there's the option to release him. There's the option to trade him. And it doesn't seem like they're going to release him, obviously, because they haven't done it yet, and they would have done it before the season. But the op- the opportunity to trade him is still going to be there at that point and might be something the Jaguars go after if Walker Little keeps playing as well as he does and they don't feel comfortable moving him you know because uh that would have to be the scenario at that point and Little's earned everything he can at this point so that's where we sit guys I I hope that things turn around unfortunately I won't be able to watch a lot of these games because of the time they're playing but uh they have some good opportunities here Maybe not the Bills game, but you do love the situation for where they're playing for that game because originally they were going into Buffalo. Now they're going to be playing in London and they have an extra week there. The only difference um, from this being essentially a Jaguars home game in London is that the Bills logo is on the field and it's in the end zones. That's the only difference. So that's good. Um, The Falcons game, that's someone they can beat too. And then you host the Colts, and you go on the road into New Orleans. At that point, you know, that's where we get to the trade deadline, and we really know a lot more about this team. But we'll see what they do. Hopefully it's uh, back to winning and some victory Mondays, but we'll have to see. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, we'll have more content out here as we get closer to the trade deadline and learn more about this team. we will probably have something after this next weekend because I think we're going to really get – a clear image of what to expect because if they go lose to Atlanta and they're playing Buffalo the week after, I'm not feeling too good about this season. I don't think you should either. If they go win, well, it's a different story then. So I appreciate it guys. Um, tr- try to enjoy something else in life while you can for this week. Uh, take your mind off of it because this has been obviously a very disappointing disaster, but There's still plenty of time for things to change. So enjoy the rest of your day. And finally, go Jags.